So I started off fishing at a young age, sort of just going with my dad, float fishing, fishing for really anything that came along, from like roach, gudgeon, perch, literally anything that would dip the float. From that point, really, I sort of made a progression into match angling. I did a lot of pole angling um, and fished like a match circuit for quite a few years and then sort of made the natural progression into carp fishing. Caught a few bigger carp when I was fishing the matches and really got a buzz from it from there. And then it just progressed naturally, I'd say, into, into what I do now, which is mainly targeting big carp. My name's Chris Eaglestone. I've been fishing on and off, I'd say, for around 15 years or so now. I'm based in South East London, and I'll be doing a lot of time in Kent at the moment. So I took a break from carp fishing probably about four or five years ago. It was when I had my son. I sort of wanted to get used to being a dad and like just sort of living life as a family. But slowly, over the last few years, I sort of started getting my head back into it. I mean, the main sort of fishing I like doing is sort of targeting either big or very old scaly fish. So I try and take a few tickets every year just to keep my options open. I like to sort of target different fish at different times of year. Currently, I'm targeting the lake we're at right now, which is a stour out in Kent. Um, it's not really a runs water or a smash em up water, but um, there's some real quality old scaly fish in here. Um, the sun's just starting to set over the trees. Rods have been out a couple of hours now, the bait's out, and we're just hoping it happens tonight, really. So unfortunately it was a quiet night last night, the temperature really dropped in the evening and it sort of set the fishing back after that we really didn't see anything show apart from one late evening that was quite a range up towards the island so on that front it's been a bit quiet. Um, I've been fishing here now for, for the last few months, I got my ticket late in the season because I got wrapped up on another water and I was looking for something else for my summer fishing so I decided to, uh, to come down have a walk around and sort of fell in love with the place straight away. Stunning water with some absolutely stunning fish. I kind of got stuck in from the off as well. I think I had a fish on my very first night, first thing in the morning, absolute one toner in the morning. I had a beautiful scaly 24 pounder and it sort of just carried on from there. I've, I've been lucky enough to be quite consistent over the last few trips, catching sort of fishing hits of mainly twos and threes with some absolute stunners in between. So the lake itself is quite shallow in its makeup. I mean, average depths are probably sort of between three and four foot, but there's loads of features out there. There's loads of weed, gravel bar. Every now and then you find, might find like a slightly deeper silty gully. Um, with regards to sort of fishing and angling for the carp, there's loads to go at. I mean, on a bright summer's day, because of the shallow makeup of the lake, you can literally see the spots growing through the water. Even when there's a chop on the water, they're clear to see. So when I first joined I kind of I was quite lucky really because I kind of hit the ground running. Um, from sort of watching a few of the other anglers I've noticed that they were finding a spot, putting a single out to the spot, getting a throwing stick out, maybe putting 30, 40 baits around the area. But what I noticed is with the seagulls and there being quite a lot of tench, um, they were probably clearing most of that bait anyway. So I was I was thinking to myself, these guys they're probably only fishing over like literally a handful of baits. So I sort of had to think about that and wanted to try and go against the grain a little bit. So um, I started baiting quite heavily. I think it's been a real edge for me really. And I've been trying to sort of produce or create like a real sort of competitive feeding situation. The reaction to bait on this place has been amazing, like right? probably more so than anywhere else I've ever fished. As I mentioned earlier, uh, I had a bit of a break from fishing uh, when my son was born. I sort of always wanted to get back into fishing, but um, when I did it, I sort of really wanted to take it seriously. Somewhere that came up on my radar almost straight away was Cleveley Mere in Essex. Cleveley was like a really enjoyable part of my fishing. Again, it's another beautiful lake with beautiful fishing. And yeah, like as soon as I started on there, I sort of got into the groove and, uh, and managed to get involved with catching a few fish pretty much from the off. Uh, probably my most memorable story from uh, Cleveley was uh, I was fishing a tree line that's on the far bank, had a savage take all of a sudden, 
and the fish kited round to the left. I was walking back with the rod and thought I got it clear of the snags, but unfortunately I hadn't. Everything was locked up probably for about 10 minutes. I thought the fish was long gone, so I decided to jump in the boat and start making my way out. I looked down and saw a big tree root sort of just under the water surface and I could see my hook link material literally coming from underneath the root. So as I've sort of stuck my hand underneath this big sort of stump or root that was under the water, I've actually felt the chin of the fish at the other side. So the fish must have literally been sitting with his nose right up against it. So I've literally just grabbed the stump and almost like grabbed the underside of the fish and literally pulled it out of the snag. As I've done so, it's just bolted out into open water and just buried his head into a weed bed. I've got over the fish and it's just literally not moving. So I've started slowly hand lining the fish out of the weed and just this huge bowl, it was ridiculously big. God knows, maybe about a hundred pound plus of weed. Managed to scoop the front of it in as best as I could and I must have been there for about five, 10 minutes, just literally folding all the rest of the weed into the net. I started plucking bits out and I saw the flank of like a really golden looking common. So I thought, happy days. Turns out once we got all the weed out of the net, it was a fish called Ginge. Proper classic fish and what a story to go with the fire. It was, uh, yeah, it was pretty amazing really. Unfortunately, my time got cut a bit short on on Cleveley because I got offered a ticket on the Essex Manor and it's not one of those tickets that comes up all the time so I thought I'd grab the opportunity while it's there. It took me a good few nights to get my first bite which ended up in a lost fish into the reeds where the water level was so high. I went from absolute rock bottom to, to sky high uh, as the first fish I did actually manage to land from there was the Northern Linear at £47 plus which sort of made all the hard work and all the hard graft like really worthwhile. A huge part of big fish fishing is just the patience, um, waiting it out sometimes, you know. It's not the most active angling at times and it's not the most exciting, but as soon as that target fish or an absolute chunk goes over the cold, it's just pure elation. And for me, it doesn't really get any better than that. My next fish from there was actually a fish called George's, which is another one of the real three sort of A-team fish. So yeah, I had a couple more that I really wanted as well in the first season. I managed to catch the baby Northern, and shortly after that, I had a fish known as the Hearttail. Yeah, fish just spring out on there, waited for them to start spawning and then really got on with my summer plan. The lake I was moving to was relatively shallow, so I knew that they'd have spawned earlier, they'd have all that out of their system, and they'd be ready to be angled for again. I think from the start of the campaign, it only took me like four nights and maybe a couple of short day sessions to get the one that I wanted. It's quite a cool story to go with it as well. I baited up a spot that I found in the boat, um, I got a bite off it really quickly. Felt like a really good fish as well and sort of pinged off almost like after about 10 seconds or so. So I was a bit dejected after that. And then that evening all hell broke loose. Not with regards to the fishing, but with regards to the weather. Um, there was a huge storm coming in. So I sat through the storm all night, woke up in the morning um, to what is normally a gin clear water. Uh, to it absolutely clouded up. As far as I was looking at the session, it was pretty much over and done with, and uh, yeah, the chances of getting by it, as far as I thought, were uh, pretty slim. I'm not even really 100% sure what made me do it at the time, if I'm honest with you. But sort of, I just felt like I should have had a fish, and I know I don't myself sound righteous or anything like that, but I felt like I deserved one. Um, so yeah, I just grabbed, uh, grabbed my floating rod with uh, with a couple of bread bombs and a loaf of bread. Sort of just went for a poodle around the lake to see if I could see anything worth having a crack at. As I sort of made my way round to the other side of the lake, um, I could see a fish from quite high up the bank that looked bigger than anything else I'd seen on my way round. Uh, as I crept down to it, it turned out it was actually my target fish, probably sitting about six foot away from the edge of the bank just sort of mouthing at scum and stuff on the surface really. Due to the size of the fish's mouth, and it's my own fault really, where I was panicking where it was there, I just tried to stuff as much bread into the bread bomb as possible. And uh, yeah, I've dropped it on its nose, it's clocked it straight away. Um, it's had three or four good efforts at trying to get it in its mouth, but just can't physically do it. It's obviously clocked that something wasn't quite right and it's bolted off. I mean, to say I was livid is an absolute understatement. I, I think I just threw the rod down behind me and just stormed off, to be honest with you. After I settled down a bit, I went to call a friend to tell him sort of like, I've just been done by the halfling. And um, I saw it again, two swims down, like exactly the same scenario, up on the surface, sucking at scum on the surface. 
and it looked prime for another bite. I ran back, got the rod. This time I cut the bread bomb right down so it was really small. Dropped it on its nose and yeah, like instantly it took it. I just lifted into it and it was game on. I think it probably took about 10, 15 minutes. Real slow, ploddy fight though. No big runs or anything like that. Sort of textbook big carp fight, really. It was in the net, like it was job done. I was absolutely gobsmacked, like from such a low again to such a massive high, like those times in fishing are really why we do it and they just they just make this what it really is i planned to fish for that fish like through the whole bulk of the summer really i didn't know it was going to happen that quickly obviously and yeah it, it was a massive surprise i think sort of two months planned fishing ended up at about two weeks i think by the fight time that i'd actually caught it so yeah, that's what led me to come here really. So yeah, I was looking for another water to fish and uh, yeah, this sort of really ticked all the boxes for me. Right, well we're just coming into our last night now. The rods are out, they're bang on the money. Um, it's out of our hands a bit at the moment. The weather's been up and down, but it's looking quite good this evening, so much better than yesterday. So fingers crossed, hopefully we'll have one to show you either in the morning or a bit later on. Right, well that's it. Unfortunately, we've come to the end of the session now. I mean, it's been bitterly cold through the nights. It was torrential rain all night last night and it's still absolutely hammering down now. I mean, it didn't happen for us, but that's part and parcel of this type of fishing, you know. It's not always gonna go your way. We're not fishing a water with sort of hundreds of fish in. Um, but yeah, I've got to get home to my family. I've got work tomorrow, so that sort of stuff takes priority. Um, yeah, it's time to pack up. I'll be back down next week though, see if we can make it happen then. Um, but yeah, I suppose we better get the gear away. Okay, so here we are, we're back at the Stour. It's been a few months since our last trip. Uh, even though the conditions look quite similar, um, it's a totally different day, you know. We've had warm westerly winds blowing in. Um, temperature's probably about 12, 11 degrees. Um, yeah, it's looking really good for a bite. We've got the rods on the spots. We've put some bait out, and yeah, we'll just wait out and see what happens. So this is the rig that I've been using for the last couple of seasons. It's worked really well on here as well. Um, it's my sort of go-to rig for sort of any situation where I can present a pop-up low to the bottom over a clear area really. So to tie it, I take around 12 inches of combi link, strip back three or four inches from the top, then I fold in half the bit that I've stripped and push it through the front eye of the hook. Once I've done that, I slip on a hook ring swivel, place the loop over the front of the hook, pull the tag down the shank of the hook, and then tie it knotless knot style. And then I trim the tag at the hook end. So after that, I tie a large loop at the lead end of the rig, tie an overhand loop knot, and this long loop section works as a bone to push the rig away from the lead. So to place on the hook bait, so I pierce the pop up, put some bait floss through the eye of the ring swivel and then pull the pop up onto the ring swivel. I trim down the floss, put a lighter to the bait floss and blob it down to secure the bait. I then add the putty to the hook end so that the pop up sinks really slow. Then I'll place putty on the knot of the loop which will then really aid in pushing the hook bait away from the lead. Yeah, so it's dead simple to tie. It's a really effective rig and it's accounted for loads of fish for me this year.
right, so the feeding spells have been really short on here at the moment, so my priority is to get the rod back on the spot. I'm just going to unhook the fish quickly, get the rod back on the spot, and there's a chance for another bite quite quickly. So this just shows the importance of getting the rod back out on the spot. Literally, it's been out for five minutes. We haven't even got the other fish out of the water yet. And uh, yeah, the rod's away again, so happy days. Um, I'm gonna concentrate and try and get this one in. But um, yeah, just it just goes to show how important getting that rod back on the spot is, because uh, you can turn what might be one bite into two, sometimes three at times. Way two in the bag. Happy days to try and get the hook out and get that rod back out. <laughs> Winter's passed, uh, we're into early spring now and the fish are really starting to wake up. So this was pretty much the first part of a double take, uh, got the rod straight back on the spot after having this one and we got a little stocky in the net as well, so yeah, happy days. Here's the second part of this afternoon's short feeding spell. A lovely little stocky from uh, Mark Harrison at Chilston Fish Farm, who's now the owner of this venue. These fish are only small at the moment, but they're quick growers and in a few years time, these are gonna be absolutely bang on. So I've been fishing on here a while now and um, I've had some really successful sessions and I think a lot of that's been to do with my baiting mix. When I first joined here, I sort of did a little bit of research about the water. Um, one thing I noticed, and anyone will, as soon as they walk onto the lake, is there are a lot of bird life. Uh, gulls, coots, geese, swans. The lake's really shallow as well, so most of the fowl on this water can reach bait in the shallower spots. So I really wanted to try and get a, a good balance of boily and particle for the boily, I've sort of gone up to 20 millers because there's a lot of tension here as well. So I know that if I'm feeding 20 mil baits, I know that sort of, if they are clearing off a lot of the particle and a lot of the smaller baits, there's still gonna be some boily left in the area. So if carp do move in after the tension and birds have had a feed, there's a good chance that there's still gonna be a few boilies left. So the particle I chose to use has been the slicker hemp. Um, it's really dark in its makeup for starters and this lake is very shallow. So I'm thinking less chance of the birds seeing it, especially compared to stuff like sweet corn, maize. So next into the mix, I've been using the key cray. Uh, I've opted for the 20 mils, as I said before, just to try and sort of get away from the smaller fish in the tench. Uh, I think it's been another real big edge for me on here. The fish seem to love it and uh, they're coming back for it time and time again. So the last part of my mix and pretty much the main bulk of it has been key cray flake. Where the boilie's all been broken up, um, it's just pumping out attractors into the water. And when they do turn up, there's obviously a nice big bed of bait rather than having just loads of single boilies. And if the birds do turn up, they're never going to pick up every single bit of bait and I'm always going to have some boily based bait left in the swim. So over the top of the mix, I've been fishing a citrus pop-up. Um, I've been fishing the bright yellow and that's what they really seem to favour on here. I think that when the fish are moving in, it's one of the first things that they're seeing in the baited area and it's getting me instant bites. Last time we was down, if you remember, I was using a mix quite heavily based on maggots. Um, they weren't really doing the business for me, I must admit. So I stripped it all back and started using the mix that I'm still using now. So I came down a week later after that session, back on the same mix again, and I had two absolute crackers from here. So, as I said I would, I've come back the next week. Um, just before first light this morning, I've had a bite on my right hand rod. Uh, yeah, it's an absolute perler. I'll just get her up and show you quickly. <sighs> And uh, as I've just slipped this one in the retainer, 
I just sorting a few bits out. I put the rod back on the spot and it rattled off again. And uh, I've got an even bigger one in the net. Check this out. Fish like this are the exact reason why I come and fish at the Stour. Like absolutely mega, chuffed to bits. Again on a mix of the key cray and uh, the slicker hemp. A little bit of maggot, but not as much as I put in the mix in my last session. Um, and yeah, this is the result. I'll get the other one out in a sec. As I say, it's even better and just as pretty. And there it is, employing exactly the same tactics off, uh, off exactly the same spot as the last one. Another absolute belter. So I haven't done a huge amount of fishing on here over the winter due to some uh, sort of family commitments, but uh, what I have done has been really successful. Um, again, utilizing exactly the same mix. Um, I mean, last week I had a free fish hit um, from a swimmer couple down. Um, two scaly old mirrors and uh, one of the smaller commons. Just before that, again in the winter, I had another 25 pound mirror, another absolute stunner from the Stour, and uh, my winter was topped off by a 30 pound common, a big deep bodied fish um, that sort of came as a bolt out of the blue. Yeah, it's been really good winter. So that's my mix. I mean, it's been really successful with me, and Key Cray's definitely a bait I'm going to be using right through into the summer months. Well that's it, unfortunately time's run out, but uh, I mean we managed to bag a couple along the way. Um, nothing happened last night, it was really quiet. So uh, yeah, unfortunately it's time to get off, but uh, I'll be back down soon. Hopefully you have another chance with a few fish.